what we experienced is far from an isolated incident. It's been expressed to the police that it's a very real concern. The woman desired to incite violence. She started making reference to the Jews and said, I'm here to kill the God of the Jews. The words are very clear. She did this out of a religious motivation, mentally sick though she may be. It was rooted in Islamic fundamentalism. And to have that on your doorstep is definitely a concern. So I'm here preparing for music. We're about an hour before the service begins and my wife is preparing some of the teas and coffees and stuff. The kids are running around and we hear this loud sound and this sound of some sort of chanting going out in the front. I'm a big believer in transparency and honesty when things happen in a public environment with multiple witnesses that might be misunderstood or that might be mischaracterized, it's important to put the facts out in front of people. On the 1st of September, when this neighbor came into the church building and was doing Islamic prayers, chanting the call to prayer through the microphone, shouting Allah Akbar, all of that, it was uh, important to have a statement from the church that clarified exactly what happened. Rachel comes over and she's like, she just opens the door and steps out and looks, looks at the very front and in the gateway, there's um, a woman who's, you know, doing Islamic prayers. And um, she tells her, look, um, sorry, you can't be doing this here. You need to, you need to go. Uh, the woman uh, insisted on coming in and was calling, the, the children had gone to the door with Rachel, was reaching out for the children, said, children, come here, come here, come here, reaching out for the children. Um, my wife then is like, no, she calls me. She says, Reagan, Reagan, she calls me and comes, comes over here, the woman literally throws herself on the ground, starts chanting in Arabic and um, doing the uh, posture, the prostrating of uh, a prayer, um, shouting out Allah Akbar. Um, at, at this point, I rush, um, start rushing, you know, Rachel and the kids out, out of the room say, okay, you have to leave or I'm going to call the police. Well, I was surprised she knew my name. I don't know her at all, but she found out my name and she um, targeted me and the kids specifically. Um, so at the time it was very scary, especially since she was trying to draw my kids towards her and so I had to grab my kids from her, yeah. At this point, the best we can surmise, she had seen the um, Hebrew, perhaps she, she knew Rachel somehow was Israeli, we don't quite know how, but she um, started making reference to the Jews and said, I'm here to kill the God of the Jews. That was caught on the call uh, with the 999 operator. And it was at that moment that they were like, we're going to send police um, to help right away. It was interesting that she specifically targeted and isolated my wife and children in that way and um, specifically indicated and highlighted the Jewish element of this. Jesus was a Middle Eastern Jewish man who lived. Show me the proof. Where's your proof? The proof is in the Bible. It's in history. Josephus. I'm, I'm here to, for you yeah. to teach me about I'm the religion. Telling you, I'm telling you. I'm passionate. I'm passionate. I want to know God, the real God. Yeah. The, the real... one and only true God. And yet you wait, stood there. You, wait, wait. And you disgraced, you disrespected okay. the space. She raced to the front and began the Islamic calls of prayer, again shouting out Allah Akbar. She then was getting in the face of Patrick, one of our long-standing um, volunteers, a big help here, has special needs. I immediately at that point confronted her and started telling her about Jesus, uh, at which point she, uh, she, she stood up, she ran again to the front and again shouted out Allah Akbar before uh, the police entered. I was scared for the children because um, I've seen horrible things happen since before the 7th of October. I grew up in Israel where you see things happen 
um, especially if you're Jewish and you get targeted. Um, so I was, my priority at the time was to make sure my kids were safe. I would not go into a mosque or a temple and make a display in such a violent, aggressive way. And I pray no Christian would, no Christian in sound mind would. And yet she has entered in this particular state and she has violated the space and left us with no other option than to call the authorities. We as a church are heavily involved in the local community, a range of things, yes, preaching the gospel, evangelism, outreach. We feed the hungry, we've sheltered people in emergency accommodation. We have people of all backgrounds, many Muslim backgrounds, believers in Jesus, and even some who are still practicing. Uh, we have one Gazan man who continues to uh, be heavily involved uh, in what we're doing here. And, and so to experience that kind of hatred and, and false representation is painful and it is difficult, but it's something that Jesus warns us we will face. I'm thankful I wasn't here to witness it. I don't think it would have been very pleasant, um, but obviously I know what happened and personally I'm not frightened or um, concerned because I know that we have God's protection. Um, yeah, we don't want it to stop um, everyday activity. And I hope that through this incident, people <laughs> aren't put off. I hope they actually are, it, it piques interest and they come and see why was this place targeted in that way. One never knows what's going to happen. And when someone aggressively enters uh, a Christian space and starts an Islamic chant or calls a prayer and says, Allah Akbar, you don't exactly know what the individual is doing, why they're doing this, or what they're capable of. We've seen story after story across Europe, particularly France, where uh, officiants, leaders, priests, pastors have been wounded or killed while conducting services. And so this is a legitimate concern and it's relevant to the story. I'm not surprised when I see a community group ban my husband for making a statement to just say, don't worry, we're okay, this is what happened, it was terrible, and um, taking it as, as good as evil and evil is good. We are the victim of a crime here, and yet there are people in our community who have felt, even in these Facebook comments, some were suggesting that the lady did nothing wrong and that um, we deserved it for who we are, for who Rachel is as a Jewish Israeli. This woman is not representative of all Muslims in Islington, surely. Um, and so it would be good to see when these things are honestly being shared, when uh, points of fact are being stated, not an immediate defense of an individual who is uh, an Islamic sister, uh, but to recognize actually th this is unacceptable and this is not conducive to cohesion in our community. The Angel Church is undeterred in its mission and in its vision to reach people of all kinds, including our neighbor, with the gospel. We had a prayer meeting in the immediate aftermath of what occurred, and we've prayed fervently for this lady's salvation. We prayed that God would help her, that the Holy Spirit would powerfully and radically transform her life. We believe He is able, and my prayer is that one day we'll see her not standing at the front shouting and stirring people up um, with Islamic calls to prayer, but that we'll see her saying, Jesus is Lord, He is my Savior, that we'll see her baptized as a follower of Jesus. Mm -hmm.